Hey, this is Malika of Evanston Live TV. I had the opportunity to interview a gentleman by the name of Robert Creighton. Now, some of you may have read the headline about Mr. Creighton in a different media where they just labeled him drug dealer denied permit to open up a restaurant. So I wanted to hear his version of what's actually taken place in terms of him opening up a business here in Evanston and has he left his past behind him? Check this out. And we are sitting here today with Robert Creighton. Hey. 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 All right. I wanted to meet with you because I'm not going to give any play to the one media outlet that wrote a story on you, but the headline, we're just going to get straight to it. It's cold out here. <laughs> Freezing out here. We wanted to be out here in the fifth world where, um, the restaurant in question is, and uh, actually it's a whole nother restaurant situation over here. There's a lot of stories happening right here in the Fifth Ward, but yeah. um, I wanted to meet with you today because the headline to that particular publication, right. um, I mean, it was just drug dealer denied. Right, right, correct. And I'm gonna be straight up honest, I didn't read it because I saw the headline. And you and I have met um, in passing before. Right. And um, I know that you used to work at Gibbs Morrison. Correct. Uh, Parks and Recreation for Evanston. Uh, what else do you do right now? Um, I'm not, no longer working for City Evanston, mm -hmm. but I work for uh, the YMCA. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a personal trainer there. I'm also uh, a manager there, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not a personal trainer. And I work for a parts, uh, a car parts store, yeah. Okay. And pretty much the story was you were denied a permit to open a restaurant. Correct. Um, do you want to fill people in on exactly what happened in that process? We, honestly, we don't even know what happened. We, um, like, it, it changed daily. Uh, they said I was denied because of um, the background and stuff like that. But my final letter didn't say that. My final letter said that they denied us. Um, actually, I wrote in and asked them to finalize um, the reason for the denial. Uh, it took um, um, three days to respond. Then they responded back saying um, it had something to do with the landlord. And he had written up a MOU, I think it's called, an MOU. And in the MOU, he was breaking the contract, which is not true. I mean, they process. I don't understand it. Like, they just make up stuff as they go along. Mm. Um, I know there was discussion because of your, your background. People were wondering, well, why not just be a silent partner? Because clearly you're wanting to do something for the community. Right. And you're a businessman right. at the end of the day. Right. So what, what are your thoughts to people saying, why didn't he just be a silent partner? I just don't understand why we got to be a silent partner. Like. Uh, like if you got a, I know a lot of people that have backgrounds that are business, that's in business. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't understand why they we have to be silent. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, like I tell everybody, this this was more than just a restaurant. This was giving our people hope mm -hmm. that was coming home from the penitentiaries and Cook County Jail that think they got to go back to the street and hustle. You know, when the, I might have been an example for somebody thinking that, you know, they could start a business, but I guess City Evanston don't, don't want that. Um, just so people get get an understanding, because the way that headline read, you know, people think you're a monster. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the monster. that's the picture they paint. You know, that's the mm -hmm. picture they paint. So, you know, we always just sit back and kept quiet. That was that was our model: just sit back, keep quiet, let people talk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to watch what people say. You also got to watch what people don't say. Mm -hmm. So you got to. Uh, we're just being conscious of what we say and, and, and sit back and, and let them talk. I just don't, you know, that, that, that newspaper, we all know what that newspaper is about and who reads that newspaper. I mean, uh, we don't read that newspaper. So, and every time my story come across the newspaper, he getting 7,000 hits. So we making it, you know. Mm -hmm. Our people didn't read the newspaper before, before, before my story was posted. We, you know, we making that guy a lot of money. And I don't understand why the city of Evanston even does business with that type of, those type of people. Mm. Right. Mm. Well, I understand that their leadership is the, the type of people. Their mm. leadership is the same type of person he is. So, 
you know. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go into a little bit about your past to explain to people like why you took that path and then what brought you out of that path? Uh, I took the path just because I was bamboozled. I thought that, you know, when I was growing up, I seen all the younger guys was able to do what they wanted to do. My mother and father didn't agree to that. My mother, I wasn't raised, like, uh, didn't have anything. My mother and father, they worked all the time. So I can't even use that as an excuse. It was just something that I wanted to do. I was a young guy, I was out here, and I seen those, those type of people were doing what they wanted to do. And, uh, and that's the lifestyle I wanted at the time. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting you say um, it wasn't a lifestyle you needed because most young people that I grew up with, because right. uh, I started out on, in Chicago on, on the south side before right. we moved to Evanston and the north side of Chicago. Right. And so, yeah, you'll have some young people that um, out of anger and poverty and desperation, they'll pick that lifestyle. Right, to, right. to do whatever. Right. But um, yeah, in Evanston, I mean, you pretty much have all the resources you need. So um, I've always wanted to know why young men in, in Evanston would even choose that path when you have, you know. Nah, don't get it twisted now. Okay. Evanston has some, me it, up. It, has two, <laughs> it has two parts to it. Like they do have okay. a, a upper class and they have a lower class. There is a lower class in Evanston. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was part of the lower class. I mean, my mom, I had shoes on my feet. Now, I didn't, I might not have Jordans, but I, and, and that's why I say that, like, um, I wasn't out here with nothing. I just wanted the Jordans. So mm -hmm. my mom made sure that we wore a coat. We went to Eska. We got coats from Eska. My mom sat in lines and got, and got um, government cheese. But that doesn't mean that I had to go sit in line. I mean, I had to choose the path I chose. I just wanted it faster. So yeah, we struggled. My mother struggled. We had three kids. She had three kids. She struggled, but that doesn't mean that because she struggled, I had to go do it. That was something that I, I chose to do, and it was the wrong decision. And what what changed your mind? What's what what happened? Was it a, an awakening? You were like, you know what? This ain't the way to go anymore. Um, it was an awakening. I was I got involved in church. Um, I was getting ministered to by a couple guys in the church, a couple guys out of my church. What church? Um, I'm in Christ Temple. Mm -hmm. uh, so Pastor Cherry, he was, he was a mentor to me. I had um, Becky, uh, I'm sorry, Bessie Jenkins. She was my supervisor at Fleetwood at the time. She was ministering to me. I had uh, Pastor Dillard. They ministered mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Effin, she, she was around. She ministered to me. And those are the people that... Uh, when I started to veer away from them, those are the people that, that came into my life. I guess God put me in their life. Mm. And those are some of the people that, that was ministering to me. So. Do you remember what words they said that, that changed? It, it really wasn't a word that was changed. I just didn't want to embarrass them. I remember um, I'm Cher Reverend Cherry's armor bearer, and I just couldn't let him ride with me like riding the car with me. I was supposed to protect him and I, I, I wouldn't want him to ride in the car with me when I was in the streets. Like, mm. So I just felt like I gotta leave something along. But it was one comment that one of my brothers made. Uh, he was an outreach worker and he mm. told me one time, like, man, look at all the stuff that you got right now. God is not gonna take you away from that and let you not have something if you're doing right. Mm. Now, if you're doing all this and, you, mm. and you're doing wrong and have something, what makes you think you're doing right and you're not gonna have something? So that always stuck with me. That stuck with me for the last couple of years. And every time I think about it, I think of that. Mm. Like, yeah. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. Well, that particular publication that wrote that headline, they don't know any of that about you. <laughs> no, they don't know. I mean, he just making, he's trying to make his money. And the thing is, every time we click on it, he make more money, you know? Mm -hmm. So we just need to band him. We're gonna, we gonna, we gonna do something. Mm. We're gonna do something. It's gonna come together. Surely it's gonna come together. Yep. All right, all right. Is there anything, well, two things. Yep. What is it that you want the community of Evanston to know about Robert Creighton? Uh, that, we, that I made some mistakes. We all made some mistakes, but uh, that we're gonna we we make it right. 
You know, uh, we try to give back. I've been giving back for the last couple of years. This is this is nothing new. It's just on a bigger stage now. So now my name is in the media. When I was doing it and they didn't hear about it, it was okay. Certain people heard about it. Certain. I mean, we did concerts. We did um, comedy shows. We did. We gave back. We were giving back. But as soon as I uh, go for the restaurant and something big, and I'm going to challenge the city of Evanston, because um, that was my goal. It was like, man, I just felt like the, the city of Evanston didn't have no competition, and they had so much say-so over our kids, you know? Like, um, it was okay for our kids to walk by that abandoned building all that time, the building being abandoned, and, or them going into the store and the chips are old. They don't care about that. So when we, when we stood up and we said that we was going to change that, then that's when I catch all the slot, mm. which is okay. Mm. And what are some words of wisdom from, and you're a lot younger than I thought. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> think I'm a little older. I'm not young, but everybody think I'm older than I am. Yeah. But you've lived. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. You, you have lived. You've seen some things. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's some words of wisdom you would give to young men and women in Evanston um, in the lower income areas who may be thinking the way they choose to think, like I want it fast. Right. What, what, what would you say to them right now? I, I really don't know. I know that you gotta change your people, places and things. I do know that. Like um, it's all, state of mind you know mm -hmm. so um i think they just got to be be ready and when they when they when it's time and and they're ready for it, the change the change will come but like i said um you're never going to change around the same people or the same places and i had to learn that the hard way you know mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay well we wish you luck in your oh, in your it. journey oh, yeah. and um i hope that you know more business leaders in the fifth ward can really come together and oh, just yeah. collaborate and make some powerful oh yeah we will we will impact we will we will <laughs> positive powerful impact so um i just wanted to give you the opportunity to well i appreciate it to tell your story because that the headline was a little i was like so is that all there's i'm sure there's more to this man <laughs> no nah, that's what they wanted they wanted that mm -hmm. it's okay i mean those those type of headlines yeah i mean it bothered me because my daughter read it. My daughter read, I mean, they, they shared it with my kids. My kids read that stuff. Mm. It doesn't hurt me. I know what it is. I know what they're trying to do. But to them, I'm going home and explaining it to them and the mother of my child and mm. uh, those mentors that I got to, you know, that's that's the part that, that hurts. But me, me, I laughed at it. It's like something else, you know. Mm. It doesn't bother me. And what's next for you? So what's next in the process? So oh, you were denied the permit. So we what, what happens next? We're still fighting. Um, they don't even know why they denied us. Uh, like I said, they contradict themselves every time they get a chance. Uh, one minute is about me. The next minute is about the landlord. They don't know. So we don't know. We still fight. We still fight. We ain't gave up. Uh, uh, we got some, we're getting lawyers involved. So we coming. Coming. You're going to hear about it. We coming. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much no, for your thank time you. today. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Rob, all thank right. you. Thank you. All right. You all stay tuned. This is Malika, Evanston Live TV.